Hey guys, what's happening? Today we're working on a 2010 F-150 with the 5.4 liter three valve engine, of course, and we have a low power concern. Now, this truck has 212,000 miles on it, so the very first thing you're thinking is, you know, ignition system, or what's most common on these is the catalytic converters to plug up and cause your low power concern, especially at higher RPMs, higher loads, when you're trying to get more exhaust through the system, just plugged up and it just can't get through, and you end up at low power concerns. Now, I already found the fix, the found the problem, and of course the fix. Um, it's an oddball, but it's probably happening more than I realize out there. And it's a free fix, absolutely free fix. Um, but first, I wanna go through a few things in the scan tool that I check uh, as pre-checks if it's concerned before you start doing an actual visual inspection under the hood. And this is gonna help a lot of you out there with your low power concerns on these vehicles, I'm sure, because this vehicle, I'm sure, is not the only one that's having this kind of concern. Let's go to the scan tool and check it out. All right, there it is. Told you, 212,000 miles in this 2010 F-150. It's still chugging along just fine. Goes to show. Uh, they're not so bad after all. So there's a few things I bring up when I ever have any low power concern. And it's not the high-speed fan. Um, first off is the barrel. That's going to tell us if the cats are plugged. Um, our electronic throttle control angle, which is the throttle body, you want to see what the actual angle is and the desired angle, okay? And make sure they're not, uh, there's not a difference of three degrees or more. And then, sure, we'll look up the MAF voltage. It will make sure it's not biased, key on engine off. And then you want to look at um, your front and rear O2 sensors, but on this one, we can only read the rears. Um, so this is the rear on bank one, and this is the rear on bank two. Um, we don't need RPM. And then I'll also look at TP1 and TP2 uh, for the throttle position sensor um, to make sure they're okay and they're reading okay and nice and smooth. These can get fuzzy sometimes and it will cause a low power concern because the throttle body is erratic. And then of course we're looking at our VCT angle uh, to see how much error there is and how well it can control the VCT system to get that power at the top end. Okay, so this is key on engine off. Now our mass airflow sensor should be right around zero. This is nothing of concern. Um, the barrel for our area should be around 158 to 160. Yeah, we're at 135 here, so that's of concern. Uh, when the vehicle initially came in, it was at 146, 145, still of concern. Um, the throttle is responding okay key on engine off, and our TP lines here are nice and smooth and consistent, okay? Now, I'm going to monitor this kind of, these uh, pieces of information as we're driving. Now, a mass airflow sensor, it's really hard to gauge how much air is actually supposed to come through uh, based on your throttle and the load and everything, so at this point, with it not being biased, I will get rid of it, get it out of our data stream, and then I'll make your data stream for the other items faster, okay? So we'll go ahead and start it up. Alright, there we go. Let me clear this out. You can see our phasers are locked right around zero. That's good to go. Our TPs again are nice and steady. And our O2 sensors, our cats, are still warming up. You can see them, they'll start to increase in voltage. So let that go. And this is also good to go as of right now. Now again, you want to monitor all these items while you're giving it the throttle and the condition is happening of the low power concern, okay? So you're going to need some kind of record function like I have on here. Now the other thing I'll do, because I know our barrel should be around 160 for our area, okay, is I will go in and I will reset all learn values uh, within the PCM, okay? And that'll bring us back to a base stock barrel, kind of right in the middle and uh, it'll learn from there, either go up or it'll go down. And usually it's around 147, 148, when we're back to uh, the live data here, 148.79. Okay, so we got started up. You can see we do have phaser issues, it's all the way over here. That phaser definitely has a problem, but it comes back to zero, so I'm not worried about that right now. 
And again, this this concern is happening under load going down the road. So we can kind of monitor some of this stuff as we're going here. Now, the very first thing you're gonna notice is that just driving around the subdivision or uh, you know around town, the power's pretty much there. I mean, you really can't tell the power's not there until you get moving along here. I know the video's a bit shaky, but I wanted to bring you along. Show you how this goes down. So we're fine, fine, fine. Trans shifts great, okay? No problems at all. Okay, and then we get out to the open road here. And that's when we're gonna start to have a problem, okay? So we're getting out, let's say we're towing or not even towing like we are now. And you really give it a little bit. My foot is to the floor right now. We're at 4,000 RPMs and we just shifted finally at 40 some miles an hour. You can see there's a real problem with power here. These engines have some kind of power and it should have much more than that. All right, here it is again from a dead stop. Put your foot to the floor. That's taking forever to shift. It doesn't have the power, okay? And also, I heard a hissing noise from the engine compartment on this side over here. Not normal. Something's going on with an air restriction coming into the engine. And this is how that event is gonna look on the scan tool. So again, we're looking at the barrel to see if it drops from the base stock value of 148.79. We're looking at the ETC actual and desired to see if it's within three degrees of each other. Uh, we're looking at the O2 sensors in the rear of the cats to see if they're switching, 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 instead of saying solid, okay? That's a good indication that cats are, um, they're just ineffective and they're dead at this point and they're probably plugged up also, okay? It's a really good sign. Um, and then we're looking at the TP1 and 2 to see if the, the data stream starts getting fuzzy and then we'll look at the VCT system to see if it's way out of whack uh, the whole time uh, the event is happening. Initial throttle application, it's gonna spike the error, um, but after that, shit's kind of stabilized. So here is how it looks. Remember, pay attention to this barrel right here, okay? So wanna pay attention to that. So we're gonna take off here from a dead stop and we're gonna put our foot into the floor. We are barely moving. We're at 4,000 RPMs and it finally shifted, okay? Now pay attention to the barrel again. After a couple applications like this, it's gonna to start to recognize it and adjust the barrel. Look how fast that barrel is dropping down. Real fast. That's not right at all, especially for the area we're in. We're about 500 feet above sea level, uh, so we should be right around 158 to 160 hertz. And that calculation is used for fuel and air coming in and everything is based off the barrel and the MAF reading um, from there on out. So if it's way off, everything else can be way off. And it's way off for a reason doing it again and we just keep dropping this one is definitely extreme usually when the uh, cats are plugged up it may go down to 141 137 but this one you'll see it just keeps dropping and we're getting that hissing from the engine compartment you kind of putting all this together very poor power in this f-150 so let's go back to the shop and we'll see if we find all right, so from that road test, we found out we definitely have a low power concern. Our barrel is continually dropping way, way low. We also have a hissing noise over here in the driver's side fender, okay? And so the very next thing I did is I looked, I opened the hood and I looked underneath here to see what kind of air intake system we had on here, okay? And this is a fully stock air intake system on here. Nothing looked abnormal at first and we definitely should not have that hissing noise coming from the fender here. Now the engineers go through painstaking efforts uh, to make it nice and quiet when you're at park to full throttle like that, at three quarter throttle, 
that you don't hear a whistling noise when it's sucking in air to go through the engine here from the fender. They make sure that it's nice and quiet. Same thing when you're driving down the road, they don't want it droning on. That's why there's all these huge resonators all over the air intake track here. They don't want you hearing that. So this system should be super, super quiet. We have the whistle and then we have a low power concern. So I'm thinking restriction. Now the very first thing I did is I made sure that these clamps were all tight on here, weren't causing a whistle, everything was pushed on firmly, no slits in the bellows, and then of course none of these resonators fell off, like this one's kind of glued in, uh, molded in, and then the, this clamp's good, all three clips across here were good, and then we were hooked in properly over here. Everything looks good to go. The one thing I did notice though is this right here. You see this right here? How this resonator, this big resonator is all smashed in. Now it's possible someone got really mad at this car and they're like, I hate the 543 valve. It's got low power, it's got tons of problems and they went like this. Yeah, it fits pretty darn good, doesn't it? So that's possible, um, but let's do a little bit further investigating of the air intake system because we did have that whistle. So the very next thing I did is I went ahead and disconnected the mass airflow sensor and then we'll pop all these clips right here so we can take it off as a unit and we'll loosen it over here. Ugh. And we'll simply pull it off of here and it lifts right up. It's hooked in over here, it's good to go. Now the other thing I noticed is this resonator right here has that, that white marking on there, like when plastic gets pinched and it pops back, it gets that white marking on there. And then look at this right here. This is the underside of that resonator. Someone hit with their fist? Well, maybe not. It's got the same thing on the other side. That indicates to me there's a huge restriction and there's such a vacuum in the intake here, it started collapsing it, okay? So the next thing I looked at was the air filter and look at this air filter. Those really cheapy ones, I'm telling you, don't buy them. The foam gaskets always break like this. And this one's just, you can see how it's kind of twisted like that. These pleats aren't that strong to begin with on aftermarkets. But when they start getting twisted like that, that usually indicates a restriction also. These are all warning signs. This is all things you just gotta pay attention to when you're taking stuff apart. Now, looking down, let me get you off of here, inside of here, everything looks just fine. There's no rat nest in there. There's no extra air filter in there. Uh, nothing. You look over here and nothing. What I'm going to do is take you down inside of here and let you see what I found. You ready for it? Here we go. Now this is the air intake snorkel. You can see and it goes into here and you can see there's some reliefs inside of there to get rid of any kind of uh, condensation. It's probably for noise concerns too. See all those holes in there? This is the little air horn snorkel that goes into the fender there. Well, what the frick is that down at the end of it there? Now, no matter what, the V8 engine needs a big old snorkel like that at the end there to suck the air in. It cannot just rely on these little holes inside of here, okay? And those are just reliefs. That is a problem right there. And that's our restriction. All right, let's see what it's all about. 13 mil. 13 mil. Get that out of there. And this whole thing kind of just picks up. It's stuck in little grommets down there. And then, you can pull the baby through. Just like that. Go ahead and pull these off so we can get a better look. And what's back there? Whatever it is, it's not right. It's not right at all. All right, so kind of get down in here. Add some weirdo restrictor in there. You see that? And it looks like it's one of those pieces they shove down. A lot of times at the factory in these fenders here, there's a big gap in the fender where it meets the door there. That's where some noise can get into the, uh, uh, the um, cabin there. 
So little stuffed pieces like this, these molded pieces like this. And see right here, this is where it hooked on to something. It slid into something. And it got loose, worked its way down, and it fell just like that, just perfect in here to block that inlet. Look at that thing. That's causing our restriction. Our whistle noise, everything. This little piece of foam, so you can just toss that. Boom, it's fixed. Reassemble, go for a drive, and verify. Here we go, a little post check. Same PIDs are up on the screen here. And we're, for the heck of it, gonna leave the barrel uh, where it was at. 139, 140 or so. And we're not gonna reset to anything. We're just gonna let it climb back up. And of course, test it to make sure full power's back. So go ahead and we can monitor the barrel as we get moving here. About to turn out into a country road and we'll feel it right away. Now the barrel's not gonna change much when you're under light acceleration. It won't really change until we start getting those wide open throttle conditions. Um, then it'll start updating. All right, here we go. Whoa, the back end almost spun out. We are moving, shifting. Everything is back. Yeah, I'm flying. And look at the barrel. It just keeps going up and up and up uh, to where it should be on there. Unbelievable difference. But you need that airflow to make everything happen. The same reason the engine needs to exit all that air. Yep. Huge, huge difference. There you have it, folks. Free fix, hopefully yours, was just as easy a fix as mine. I'll see you next time, guys.